Head over to St. John's in uh, Wheeling Township and Gordy Cosfeld for uh, today's AM Minnesota. Yes, thanks, John. We are sitting with Craig Keller in the anniversary room at St. John's United Church of Christ, uh, St. John's UCC Church here. German Fest is coming up on Sunday. Technically, the address is 19086 Jacobs Avenue, Faribault. We're in Wheeling Township, right, Craig? That's correct, Gordy. Thanks for having us. You're welcome, and guten Morgen to you and all our listeners. Wow, German Fest coming up this Sunday here, and this is the 18th, isn't that what you said? 18th annual. It all started just... It started back in 1997 with the first year the youth group actually started it, and we did it ourselves, and it wasn't quite as big as it is now. Uh, but, uh, Steve and Deb Willie from Nearstrand were youth advisors with me, and we decided that we should try and do some kind of a celebration to celebrate our German heritage out here. And lo and behold, you started it, and it's been going on ever since. That's correct. Over 700 people have been served at this event. Yeah, our average is around 600, but we had 702 one year. And shooting for 800, I've always had my goal is to serve 1,000 people. So. Yeah, well, I know we could do 1,000 people. There's got to be at least 1,000. Germans around the area. Come on. <laughs> I hope so. And you don't need to be German to come. You can come and enjoy it anyhow. No, that's true. I just had some of your delicious grandma's secret not so German secret. recipe <laughs> for bread pudding. It was very good. Yeah. Okay. And we're not supposed to serve that to company, but that's what the people really love when they come here. So. We you mean you're not supposed to serve it to company? Well, Grandma said that uh, you only served that at home because it was a poor man's dessert. You know, for company, she made apple pie and chocolate cake and stuff like that. But uh, when they made homemade bread years ago, and maybe it got standing on the counter too long and got a little old or stale, uh, then they'd cut it up and make a batch of bread pudding and serve yeah. it for the, themselves. Yeah, as I told you earlier, they didn't waste anything in the last That's days. right. They taught us very good lessons, and some of us aren't keeping up the tradition. Not necessarily all the time. You know, about using everything yeah, and reusing everything. German Fest coming up on Sunday. We'll get into more details about the specific event, but, Greg, how long have you been a member out here? Ever since you were... Oh, ever since yeah. I was born, probably, yeah. yeah. Born and raised on the family farm, and my parents were lifelong members here. My grandparents were... My great-grandfather was one of the ones who started the church, so... We've been just involved with the church forever. You've got lots of memorabilia in here, too, that people can look at. There's a display the, table, yeah. For the old com country and from earlier in the last century. That's correct. Yeah. we got a lot of uh, photos and pictures and things to look at in both the anniversary room here and the dis display table in the foyer. So make sure you come on out, folks. It's a terrific time. The food is spectacular. What's on the menu? What's on the menu? We got time for the whole menu. We got we start out with a well, it's a German buffet we call it, but we also have some things for that necessarily not everybody likes all the German traditional food, which is made with bacon and vinegar. So we do have some other things. So we start out with uh, German style green beans, sweet and sour beets, and then we got buttered corn. And the buttered corn is not canned corn; it's homegrown sweet corn. Uh, and then we got. Uh, hot German potato salad, and we've got mashed potatoes and gravy. And then we've got, for the meats, we have, uh, you can have brats, and then we have sour broughten, which is uh, the finer quality meat. Uh, and then we have a, a beef sausage called Rinderwurst. Uh, but a uh, terrific the food in the menu for German fest coming up this Sunday right here in the uh, at the, uh, on the grounds of St. John's UCC Church, again at 19086 Jacobs Avenue in Faribault. That's correct. Pretty easy to find, too. It's right? easy to find. Yeah. County Just Road take Highway 60 east, east of Faribault and uh, about eight miles and go two miles north on Jacobs Avenue. You can't miss it. No, oh, the nice steeple towers above the trees so majestically. Mm -hmm. Looks very nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And you're doing some siding out here, I see. Yeah, we're doing, well, we just finished the, a roofing project on the church. We put steel roof on the church and the steeple. Smart. Yeah. yeah. Now they're doing, finishing up just a touch-up on the east wall of the parish hall. I tried to dock my church into going with a steel roof. Yep. Yep. Last longer. Yep. You don't like to put all your money in roofs every 20 years, do you? No. Well, this last one, the roof. 
uh, cedar shingles lasted 40 years, which was kind of typical, but now they say the wood shingles aren't lasting as long either, so we decided to go with steel. Yeah, that'll be, what, a century? Hopefully a lifetime for most people. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, German Fest again coming up this weekend. It's the 18th annual. Let's talk more about the menu now. Okay, we were talking about the meat, and I was going to explain a little bit about the Rinderwurst and the Sauerbraten. Brats, I think most people are familiar with. Yeah. Rinderwurst was a, another old uh, German custom from this area. When you talk about the Germans didn't want to waste anything, after they butchered their cow for the year, uh, they would cut, make their, their steaks and their roasts and nice cuts for dried beef, which they would process. But then anything left over, they would put in a big kettle and cook all up, and then they would grind the meat off or take the meat off the bone and grind it up. And then they added spices, and each family had their own little kind of twist on what kind of spices they added, but mainly it was, you know, salt and cinnamon and nutmeg, and some added cloves or allspice. Uh, onions are added, and then they added, which was kind of hard to believe, but there's an oatmeal filler that goes in with it. And so it's kind of a unique uh, meat uh, dish. And it was traditionally served for a breakfast or Sunday evening meal with the uh, Johnny cake, they called it, but they were, you know, cornbread. Uh, and then getting back to the sauerbraten, that's a more finer meat dish. Uh, normally you would roast, take a roast and uh, bake it and uh, then cut it. But when I'm serving this many people, I have the meat already sliced. And right now I am marinating it. I marinate it for three days. I got that started yesterday. And then you heat it up. And what you marinate it in is like a red wine vinegar and red wine and some spices and onions again. You know, use onions and everything and vinegar. And uh, then when you cook it uh, or bake it, uh, you drain the juice. And then from that juice, you add a flour and butter base along with crushed ginger snaps, which gives it a sweet and sour gravy taste. And that gets put over the meat. And it's a, it's a nice... Nice piece of meat. Oh, you're making me hungry, and I just had some delicious bread pudding. <laughs> well, that's what we want to make people very hungry. So <laughs> you can't go away from here hungry because no. you can, you know, come back for seconds if you so wish at the buffet line. After the meat, we have also sauerkraut, naturally. you got to have sauerkraut at a German meal. And then uh, red cabbage. And then we have uh, seven different choices of desserts. We so have this authentic yeah. German sauerkraut. The reason I say that is when I was in Germany a couple of years ago, their sauerkraut was nothing like I had here. It's this very, is, very good. Not this, that I've never had good sauerkraut here, but it's much better over there. Okay. Well, this is homemade sauerkraut, and so it's made in a crock and, and preserved, so... It's homemade. It's not a canned sauerkraut. Just like I said, the corn there wasn't canned either. It's yes. homemade. Uh, that's what we wanted to do was make home a homemade style dinner. Yep. Uh, then getting to our desserts, uh, we have angel food cake. We have cream puffs, which we make up here at the church. Uh, apple strudel bars. Uh, then we have black forest cake, German chocolate cake. And I'm hoping I'm not missing anything. But then we the the main dessert one, which people just die for, is the homemade bread pudding. Yeah, that was with vanilla good. sauce, and yeah. it's served fresh out of the oven and warm. You have to have the vanilla sauce. Oh, that makes a, that makes the the sweetness to it. Mm, yes, it's so delicious. Got to come out, folks. I had just had a plate. Was, Craig was nice enough to give me a plate. Yeah, all kinds of things going on during German Fest. We were chatting before going on the air. You've expanded over the years too. Yes, yeah. When we started, we we did start with, uh, we had a petting zoo outside. Uh, I don't know the first year that we had a quilt show, but we had a petting zoo and we had a, a small bake sale uh, and Christmas store. Those were the one things we wanted to divide up and have something that's a family-orientated uh, event. So we wanted something for kids like the petting zoo. They love seeing the little animals out there. Um and, you know, we've, we've changed things and become very much more efficient over the years, that's for sure. The whole cycle of life, I think it's very, very interesting to see. When you come out to the St. John's, you'll see a playground next to the cemetery. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the, the picture is, you know, that's what life is, right? Mm-hmm. Start with the playground with the youngsters and 
You end on the cemetery. Yeah, and it's all right here on your church grounds. Yeah. I just thought that was kind of interesting. Going to have some old-time music, of course. Oh, that's a definite. Yeah, the first year, too, we had just tape recorded music. And uh, then we did have, like, every hour on the hour. Well, the first year, too, we just went from 11 until 2. And then I don't know how many years it was before we expanded to the evening uh, the, uh, supper hour. Uh, but anyway, we had just recorded old-time music to begin with, and now we have live old-time bands. And we usually have them divided up. The first one, Tim Klein and Friends, they play from 11 until 1. And then uh, Ray Sands and his band, they come from 1 till 3. And then the Stuttgart 3, they're from Rochester. And uh, the reason for the title, Stuttgart 3, David Naylor, the uh, leader of the band, lived in Stuttgart, Germany for several years. Uh, and he loves music and loves talking German. So uh, they do our polka praise service also at 3 o'clock, and then they continue out in the big tents and playing from 4 to 6. Well, that's good worship music. I love polka praise services. Yes, we, we've done that now for, and we have had the polka praise service outside in the tent, but now we've decided to have that back in the sanctuary because people do like to come in there for that, and then we... During that time, we move the quilts off to the side again and, uh, and then have the polka praise service in there. And there are several readings and scripture readings during that, but then most of it is, is singing the old hymns to a polka or waltz beat. And a little dancing? Probably not in the church, but we'll, we do the dancing outside from the, under the big tent. <laughs> All right. So make sure you come on up for that, the polka praise service three in the afternoon. Your morning worship service at 10 is your traditional service. Well, it's a traditional service, but we do have special German readings for that, too. We have a couple of people uh, uh, that have actually been youth fellowship members that have gone to school and taken German and been in Germany, and so uh, they read scripture, and uh, well, her name was Carrie Little, and now she's Carrie Hess from up in the cities. Mm -hmm. She's a member here, and uh, She'll read German, and our pastor, too, does German. She lived in Germany for several years. Uh, she can speak German. Uh, and, then we, and she's going to actually sing some music or special music in German. Your pastor is? Uh, yes, Pastor Laura Sturm. And she'll do the special music in German, and then uh, otherwise it is more of a traditional service. During the service, we had, and that's something we evolved with, too, which we all didn't accomplish right away, but we now have a, during that morning service, we have recognition of confirmation classes that have, for people who have been confirmed here. Ever from We do it every decade, like 10 years, 20 years, all the way up to 70, or some years we have been having 80-year reunion. So those people are probably 94 years old, um, you know, because they're usually confirmed at 13 or 14 when right. they were here. Uh, so that's been kind of a, a neat thing to do. We give them special name tags and a corsage and boutonniere and, and uh, recognize them. Cool. And do you get a good crowd? I mean, of those people? Yeah, yeah. That's, some of them are further away in Cantatan or for whatever reason, but we've had a pretty good representation of those classes. You know, a classmate of yours or somebody who went to your school gave me a call this morning and said on September 27, 1968, there was a bus accident near this church. That happened right here on the corner of Jacobs Avenue and 190th Street. It wasn't called that at that time, but uh, I remember it well. It was a very scary event, but everybody came came through it, and uh, a couple of them had serious injuries. But I was following the bus not too long afterwards after the accident because I was driving to vocational school at the time. Yeah, and so you can remember it vividly in your mind, too. Bus on its side. Yep. Yep, with a bunch of scared kids, and but they, like I said, the ambulances were here, and the sheriff department were here, and everybody came out fine. And probably a rattled bus driver too, I yeah. think. Yeah, very. 1968. Yep. Incredible memory for a listener who called and said that very day okay. he was on the bus. Okay. I didn't recall the date, but I knew it was 68. I think he said he was on the bus. I'm sure he's listening. Yeah. If if it's not that way. You'll have to give me a call, and we'll make that change. You have a root beer stand out here, too, for German Fest, root beer stand. Yes, yes, we do. Uh, we got some little, looks like a little Bavarian chalet type of thing we've made, and uh, we serve root beer out there and brats. And, uh, but root beer is German, is it? 
No, but we do have a policy of the church that we don't have alcohol on the grounds. Which oh, is, oh, I, I so see. We decided to go with having 1919 root beer out here. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, and uh, then they also can buy brats out there if they if people don't want to come and go through the whole German buffet. And the weather is nice. They can visit on the grounds out there and have root beer and brats. And sometimes we have German chocolate cake out there or apple strudel bars. You're making me hungry again. <laughs> Craig Keller is with us. We're talking here at St. John's UCC. German Fest is coming up on Sunday. We did not mention the serving hours. You touched on it a little bit that you have two serving times. We start at 11 o'clock, which is right after the morning church service, and we go until 2. And no reservations are needed. Uh, just come, and we've been moving people through the line. There's hardly ever any wait. Uh, so we have 11 to 2, and then we take a little bit of a break, and then that's 3 o'clock polka praise service. And then after that polka praise service, we start again at 4 o'clock, and serve until 6. So you could actually come for... If you wanted to come for two meals for, for dinner and supper, you certainly are welcome. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm thinking you could come for both meals. I can't believe how reasonably priced this is, Greg. Twelve fifty for adults. Now remember, this is all you can eat. Five to twelve, five dollars for and under eat for free. Yeah. This is obviously not a fundraiser for the church. Well, it is a fundraiser, um, but we try to keep the price down to make it reasonable for families to come. Okay. So make sure you come on out, folks, and you don't need to make reservations either. You just show up, right? Right. Yep, just show up. Out here at St. John's UC. Buy your tickets as you come through the door on the north side, and we usually ask people. we got a sign out there in the front, and we all have parking in the parking lot and also on the bare spot south of the cemetery. Uh, if you're able to walk, you can park further away, and uh, the older people can park in the parking lot. Handicapped people are welcome to park on the north side of the church. And, again, our forefathers were very uh, thinking very good for the future because this is one of the older, few of the older churches that don't have 50 steps to walk up into the church. It's all on ground level. Yeah, I didn't realize that until you just now... Sure on the north side here, it's all ground level and there's no steps going in. Because most churches, you do have. Yep. yep. The older churches all had a lot of steps to kind of go up, you know. Yeah. So. And they down. always had a, then they had a basement underneath the church, which we have, we do have a basement. We've never used it, so. Yeah. My hometown, church, the church I grew up in is that way. Mm-hmm. Has a basement. There's a lot of steps going up to the front door. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the way they built them back then. They didn't live as long. I was going to say a, a little bit more about some of the other things that we do have. I'm going to touch on the, well, the bake sale is kind of, you know, people from the church here will bring in baked goods, and that room is packed with things, and there's enough to go on all day. Uh, the Christmas store, we have greeting cards available in there, uh, everyday occasion greeting cards from Get Well to Sympathy to Birthday Cards. We also have Christmas cards. Uh, there are Christmas ornaments. Some are in German. Uh, there's there's a lot of things in there. We got our cookbooks. There's still some of those are available. St. Uh, John's apple jelly. Oh, that St. John's apple jelly. Yes, we make that every year. We did that the first year and can have continued it on. Uh, some years the apples weren't as prevalent. Two years ago and this year the apples were a little not very prosperous anyhow. Uh, but we'll have enough apple jelly for an apple butter. We also make some apple butter, too. Ooh, I love apple butter. Yep. Uh, and so we started making that, too, from not throwing out the pulp. And, uh, we had one of our committee members for German Fest had a recipe to make apple butter, and so we were doing that. Uh, after the morning service, I was going to just mention, touch on, too, the quilt show. I mean, we have a splendid quilt show in there. Uh, uh, Deb Willie is a very prominent uh, and enthusiastic person for making quilts, and she has actually a quilting group from the community that meets here every second Saturday of the month, and they kind of put on a show, and then they are going to have a quilt raffle. That's part of the end much more. Uh, there is a quilt raffle that they have prepared, and I believe that they made it from all the material from the original dresses that were made when we started, uh, and Deb and my sister Pauline made all the dresses uh, to begin with for the girls uh, because all the ones who wait on tables are definitely in costume. Not everybody is required 
to wear costume, but those that are waiting on tables are. Oh, okay. I was going to get to the authentic costumes. Mm-hmm. And they, they look very nice. And but anyway, they got that, that quilt raffle going on. Uh, I think that's about all that needs to be said on the quilt show. We This year, for the first time, we're doing a, a table or two that we have some items for a silent auction that people can bid on. Uh, some things that are going to be on there is like a screened tent, uh, and then there's a George Foreman grill. There's a butcher block uh, roll-away uh, counter type of thing that you can use in your kitchen or patio. Uh, several other items. I can't get them all off the top of my head. Sure. But, uh, so people want to take that in, of course. And the farmer's market has been something that we don't have outside vendors come in. This is something that the people from the congregation here do. They supply garden produce and maybe even some craft items that that's out on the table underneath the big tent. And you'll have some tents out here in case there's some rain, so don't need to worry about we have, that. We have two smaller tents for the petting zoo, and then we have one large tent for where the bands are performing underneath and where we have the farmer's market. And then the ladies of the church, too, have uh, also done some or made some quilts and hand-tied them this winter, and they will be, there's a few quilts for sale, actually. The ones on the quilt show are not for sale, but under the big tent, there'll be some quilts for sale. You hear that? There'll be some quilts for sale, too. So it's all happening, German Fest, here at St. John's, 19086 Jacobs Avenue, here at Wheeling Township. And again, the old-time music performances are from 11 to 1, 1 to 3, 3 until 6, with a Pope of Praise service at 3 in the afternoon on Sunday. Has that always been part of German Fest, the Pope of Praise service? Not the not until we started doing the supper hour, serving from sure. 4 to 6. The first couple of years when we just served from 11 to 2, no, we didn't have that. Yeah. The expansion was a good move, you think? Yeah. Yeah. And then we also expanded to bingo. People love to play bingo, so we have a bingo uh, booth. Out in the parking lot. You uh, play German bingo, too? I no, uh, It wouldn't be German bingo. <laughs> well, they have Spanish bingo. They must have okay, German bingo. Not that I know of that as German bingo. It would be regular bingo. And if it is raining, we have had it one year in our uh, outdoor shed out there, so you would be completely undercover. Yeah, this is a gorgeous church, Craig. Thank you must you. love coming here every Sunday. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a marvelous historic church. It's built from the... From the area of stones or what? The, the, the church was built in 1870 from uh, the limestone on Faribault's East Quarry, they always talked about, sure. just the east of Faribault. Oh. And when they built the parish hall here in, in 1958, they tried their best to match the stone as best they could. Yeah. Well, they did a pretty good job, don't you think? Yes, they did. I think it looks nice. And you're putting siding on that right now. Correct, yeah. I mean, there's stone facing on the front and on most of the sides, but on some portions there were just a, I don't know what kind of covering was on there, but I'm putting on steel siding. Yeah. Because it's wearing down or what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The stone. You just need to replace things. Yeah. That was on there originally. So. so again, German Fest, 18th annual edition coming up this Sunday. Let's pack the place, folks. You don't need reservations. You just come on out and enjoy the delicious German buffet meal. Eat as much as you want. Correct. Twelve fifty for adults. Five to twelve eat for five dollars. Four and under eat for absolutely free. Is there somebody here to answer a phone if people have questions, Craig? Well, we'll be here all week. And they can also call the two numbers on our home phone number, and but they probably have to leave a message because we're up here quite a bit. But oh, they sure. can call here. The, and the telephone number here at the church is seven eight nine five zero seven seven eight nine five seven six six. Five seven six six. So this is your number, and, and these are our my office number and the home number. Oh, okay, you want to give those credit? Okay, the, my our home number is seven five zero seven seven eight nine six six three five, and my number at the office is five zero seven three three four six five five zero. If you've got any questions, you certainly can leave a message there, and we will get back to you. And before I let you go, you guys are also correct me if I'm wrong. In charge of the uh, run that happens. Yes. Big Woods Run. You know, this is a small rural congregation with only 160 members, and we're going to be 160 years old next year. But we do have a couple of things that in the spring of the year we're quite, a, quite famous for we're running for over 50 years of Last Supper drama. And then now for the last uh, 18 years as well, we've been doing the Big Woods race. It starts here and finishes here. 
Yeah. And that's just in a couple of weeks from now, so we're really busy this fall. Yeah, and it's a gorgeous course, I've been told. In running from here to the Big Woods, yes, and through the Big Woods for the 10K, and the 5K gets buffed out, and then they run back here to finish. This is kind of, years ago they did the uh, Baloney Days in near Strand. In near Strand. And they had a, a run with that. Mm -hmm. But the Baloney Days ended. It was kind of neat that you guys pick up the, the we ball. We decided here. to take that up. And all the proceeds, that was one of the things, all the proceeds for that go to mission work. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. You hear that? All of that goes to mission work. So when is that? October 10th. Mark that down on your calendars. October 10th. And you can walk it. You don't have to run it, right? There's, they get a walk, I think, too, and then a kitty walk or a kitty run. Yeah. Everybody can get a ball. Well, thanks, Craig, for having us out at St. John's. You're very welcome at Guten Tag, which means good day. Yeah, Guten Tag. Guten Tag. That concludes today's edition of Bay of Minnesota. I'm KDHLAM, Faribault, Minnesota. Guten Tag.